For the first month in 2022, S&P 500 finished the month at a positive note with more than 3.5% return for the month of March. Best performing sectors were utilities, energy, real estate, materials, and healthcare. Well, and of course, consumer discretion. While the technology industrials, consumer staples, and communication services underperformed the S&P, yet they closed at a positive return for the month of March. Only financials ended March at almost zero. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's almost like 0.2 negative. Um, however, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the Russell all closed positively for March, uh, still underperforming the S&P 500. There is a lot of questions about housing market right now and how is that affected by the rising interest rate. Now, we have to understand that the roughly 150 basis points increase in the 30-year mortgage rate since the start of the year will, will reduce affordability for new buyers. However, it is worth noting that only 1% of outstanding U.S. mortgages are currently on adjustable rates, compared with 40% in 2006, 2005. So the downside to prices should also be reduced by limits on the supply of new housing, as builders are struggling with shortages of labor and materials. So yes, it will cause it. However, it won't be as much effective as long as we have the current supply problem. So to better understand it, we look at the, for example, the three-year yield. Right now it's at 2.5. A month ago, it was 1.7. So you can see the difference here that one month made for almost risk-free asset. Now for bonds to become more attractive, we need to see inflation cooling to a normal level. We can't continue to see at 8.5, for example, but we're already seeing three to 4% yield on investment grade Moonies and five to 6% on investment grade corporate bonds. Now that will not mean much if inflation remains at an elevated level that we see now got into 8.5 because the actual return will be, as you know, return and inflation to get you on one year period. Um, so unless we go for bonds, say, above 8.5, if it stays at 1.5, we are making any real return. Now, it is important to differentiate between cooler stock market, which is clo more closer to the historical mean of 8 to 9 percent, and a recession. The recession refers to declining GDP numbers in two consecutive quarters. So production will be reduced for two consecutive quarters. That's where we start seeing a recession. Um, and if you look back at when we had this mini recession at the beginning of the pandemic in March 2020, and then we see how did the market do from then till this point, we see that stock market rallied at around 96.5%. So circling back to understand the Fed rate and how they use it. Um, we know it is part of the policy that they indirectly influence economy with to achieve objectives. These objectives could be different from one period to another. Right now, as we said, it is to reduce inflation. The optimal use of it is to maintain low rate during economic stagnation or recession and gradually increase as economy heads toward expansion until economy reaches a peak point where the rate should also be at a peak rate. So why do we have that? So when the economy slows down, that's when the high rate becomes useful because now you can lower it and then cost of borrowing becomes really low, helping more money to be injected into the economy. Now, looking back at the beginning of the year in 2008, the Fed rate was around 4% and it was cut rapidly to near zero to inject liquidity in the market and generate growth which eventually happened. In 2020, we started the year with 1.5 rate. Same thing, dropped it down to near zero for the same purpose. In both cases, Fed begins to raise rates when they deem that the economy can sustain growth without extra push provided by cheap borrowing costs. And since 2020, companies have utilized this low cost debt to fuel growth. 
and generate positive earnings. At this point, we see healthy liquidity on companies' balance sheets, which help us understand that even raising rates will, will not likely cause a recession.